Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be creating a galaxy background using Jane Davenport's mermaid markers. These are water-based markers and they are highly pigmented and um, have a really nice brush uh, tip to them. I'm using watercolor paper because I'll be, um, be using some water along with these inks. And I did spray my panel down with water and I'll be doing a wet on wet technique. And that's so that when I apply the ink down, it has nice soft edges because it's not going to absorb into the paper right away. And that gives you time to kind of um, continue to work with it, layer the colors and just kind of build out that color. I started with the two lightest colors, the really bright pink and teal, and now I'm going in in with sort of my mid-tone blue to cover up the rest of the white that's showing and I'll start to overlap some of those lighter areas as well. What I like to do is um, I try to keep the centers or at least some of the centers of those bright spots um, nice and dry and still exposed instead of covering them up entirely and that's so that when I move on to this phase where I'm using the deep sea purple, which is the darkest color I'll be using. I um, can color right over, but I, I actually use a paper towel, as you can see here, to lift some of that ink off. And um, you didn't see it on camera, but I did mist it with a little bit of water too, just to um, soften those edges and brush strokes a little bit. But by allowing some of those lighter areas to dry, I found that you could layer color on top and have it not mix into a new color, but rather just layer um, almost like a glaze over top. I'm working in a little shoe box here as my little spray box and I'm spraying, this is just a homemade mica mist uh, that I have and it's a mixture of distilled water, gum arabic, and mica powder. Now I wish I had started with a larger panel because as you can see there I got rather large splat of mica mist and if I had a larger panel then I, then I could be a little bit more selective about where, um, what I chose or which section of the galaxy I chose to layer on um, my card front. But as you can see, once that mica has a chance to dry, you do get really bright. You don't see the shimmery effect of it, but um, that's the beauty of using the mica powder as opposed to a white ink, um, for example, because you'll get a really nice um, shimmer to it, which works really well on this card because I'll be using some um, silver foiling on my sentiment and I'll be using some uh, silver matte mirror card um, as part of the mandala design that I'm die cutting out of my galaxy pattern right now. Now, um, in advance of this video, I did create a little template. That's the white cardstock layer that you see there. And that's so that I could really kind of get the positioning just right and die cut out of that uh, piece of scrap paper. And if I messed up, I could always, you know, start over again as opposed to um, trying it for the first time on my galaxy background. And if it didn't turn out the way I wanted, then I'd have to recreate the entire galaxy background. So having a template out, uh, cut out of scrap paper and then just giving myself some registration marks for where to line up my die really help to, um, you know, just make this final part where I'm die cutting from my background a lot, a lot easier and a lot more foolproof because I will be using both um, the panel as well as um, the die cut that's, um, that drops out from the die. So once I have all of these die cut, uh, pieces cut out. I had already in advance used the exact same die that you see me using here to die cut the same number of pieces out of black foam and as well a uh, silver matte mirror card. And I'll be keeping all of those pieces so that I can inlay the center portion with the galaxy design back into a silver bordered pattern. And so you'll see that here in a second. Now, the reason why I chose to use 
um, black foam instead of white foam is purely just because this is a night scene and so I just wanted to make sure to use something that was dark and um, wouldn't stand out or detract from the design. So um, off to the left there you see all of the pieces that I've already um, die cut in advance and this is the last um, uh, part of assembling uh, these pieces which is to um, you know pop in the center. Now I did think about um, keeping that little dot that's <laughs> at the very top of the mandala design, but these are such small pieces that I decided instead of doing that, I'll just line my card panel with just black cardstock, and I'm going to actually just poke out that dot. So you'll see straight through to the black cardstock. I didn't want to leave it white, so, um, because I think that'll sort of detract from the design too much. Um, but I also didn't want to worry about having to pop in um, just that little, little dot from the galaxy background. So when I die cut my foam, what I did was put double sided adhesive both on the top and the bottom because it just makes it so much easier to peel off the paper liner um, from the top to die cut or to place or adhere the silver and the galaxy portion back in. But as well, once you have that um, top portion finished, it's easy to then peel off the paper liner on the back and adhere it to your card. So that just speeds things up and then you don't have to worry about using um, uh, a, a tape runner or uh, liquid glue. As you saw, I still used a little bit of liquid glue just to make sure everything stuck down, but I didn't have to worry too much about getting it uh, too close to the edges. For this middle design, because it's so intricate and has so many little um, open areas in the center there, instead of using black foam, I just die cut that same design out of black cardstock. I think I die cut it four times in order to sort of match the same depth as the foam that I'm using. And that way um, I still have all of that dimension, but um, it uh, still die cuts really nicely, uh, even though it's so intricate. So this um, Shine Bright sentiment is from a Glimmer foil sentiment um, set. And I've been really getting into the Glimmer foil machine lately, and I have been adding a touch of foiling on a lot of my projects, almost all of them as of late, because it's just so easy to do, and you get such um, a beautiful kind of professional result that just looks very different from embossing. It's almost the reverse of embossing because you almost get a more debossed um, kind of impression that's sunk into your card uh, as the foil press goes through. And, um, you know, I've tried to make galaxy backgrounds before using various different types of media, and I've never really created one that I liked. This is probably the first galaxy background that I've made that I, I actually like, and I found it was so easy to do with the mermaid markers. I've seen other videos of folks using distress oxide inks, watercolor, and, um, and I've tried to do the same, but just haven't had the success that I had with the mermaid markers and it was so easy to do. So I don't know if I just got lucky. This was the first panel that I made and it turned out um, really well for uh, at least my attempts anyways. And um, I am really eager to, to try it again and see if uh, this wasn't just beginner's luck. But somehow I think it's just that the mermaid markers were really great to work with and just the perfect colors for creating a galaxy background. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I do have other videos where I've used some other Jane Davenport media supplies, so feel free to check those out in the description box below. Thanks again, and until my next video, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Thanks. Bye.